Welcome to episode two of the Momxiety Club podcast. Today's episode features a discussion with Meredith Sickett, school counselor. Welcome to the Momxiety Club. I'm your host, Tori Levine, a former mental health worker with degrees in psychology and criminal justice. So I know the importance of keeping calm in a difficult situation. But when I had my kids, I found myself full of anxiety, constantly questioning if I was doing things right or how I was messing up my kids now. One day, everything clicked, and I made a commitment to own my anxiety so it doesn't own me. And that's why I started the Momxiety Club podcast. Each week, we'll discuss all things motherhood. So join me, and let's get rid of this Momxiety together. Hi, my name is Tori Levine, and I want to welcome you to the Momxiety Club podcast. I'm very excited to introduce you to Meredith Sigget. She's the host of the Finding Myself podcast, life coach at Meredith Sigget Consulting, as well as a school counselor. And she is here to chat with us today about anxieties that we may be having about deciding if we are going to be sending our kids back to school or to daycare, as well as anxieties our children might be having. Hi, Meredith. I am so happy to have you here. So uh, I would love for you to give us a little bit more of an introduction and uh, take it away, Meredith. Oh, hello, Tori. I am so excited to be here with you. Uh, I've got my iced coffee and I'm ready for this chat. I'll, um, I'll be honest, I have had my mom anxiety moment for the week. I'm hoping it's just one. Yes. So <laughs> this comes at such a, a good timing and what we're talking about today is exactly what I had my moment about. So I'm so excited to talk with you and uh, see what, what we can come up with. Uh, mm-hmm. But just to tell you a little bit about me, uh, my name is Meredith Sigget. I am uh, with Meredith Sigget Consulting in the um, Finding Myself podcast. I'm also a school counselor, and I've been counseling for over uh, 10 years, mostly with middle school students, but I have worked with elementary all the way through high school, and I guess a little bit of college um, during my training. But I am just excited to help people find themselves and to find positivity and joy in the journey and to look at mindsets and living intentionally. I went through an infertility journey and it took a lot of my time and energy, as you can imagine. And I came out of that with two beautiful kids that I'm so happy that I have. But we got to a certain point in the kids growing up where I didn't have them in my arms anymore and I had a little bit more time for myself. And I realized that I needed to find a little bit more for me, do a little bit more to fill my soul. And so I started down a journey of podcasting and then getting into life coaching and I'm really enjoying life. I have learned so much about myself and I've met so many great people such as, well, I met you before this whole journey. We've been together for a while, but to be able to be on another podcast is really awesome. And to be able to connect with more people is really amazing. So thank you so much for inviting me on here. Of course, I'm so excited to have you and thank you for coming on. Um, So just a little, I'll give a little background. We met when our first children were born and in our local mom's group, which in and of itself kind of was my inspiration for Momxiety Club five years later, six years later. Um, But just to have that group, because Meredith is one of those people who helped me as a new mom, along with all the other moms there. And that's really what this is about. And today we're just going to chat about anxiety and kind of everything that goes into it with sending your kids to school, to daycare, and then especially with everything that's going on right now with COVID-19 which I don't know about you, Meredith, but when Ruben was going into kindergarten, I was having tons of anxiety about everything. Either I didn't prepare him right, things were going to go wrong at school that he wasn't going to handle and I wasn't going to help. He wasn't going to tell us things and there was he was going to be bullied, which 
he actually was a couple of times, but, um, but you know, they, we figured it out and it was okay. So I don't know because you, your kids, you sent them to daycare. And I know from our friendship that there were some issues with the daycare, which probably caused even more anxiety for you. But did you have that same thing when your daughter started school or was it kind of more centered when you first sent your kids back to daycare when you started working? My anxiety was probably more when the kids went to daycare after I needed to go back to work. Um, I And there's a reason for that. I was lucky enough that the daycare that I had been sending my kids to uh, prior to Madeline going to um, kindergarten, they had a private kindergarten. And so I sent her there. So she didn't leave that bubble that she had been in. So that made it so much more easy that we were still walking into the same building. We were working with essentially the same people. So that's why it was a little different for me. But what what I totally well, now, this you're right yeah. there in it right now. Yes, this this is when I'm going to move my daughter on to first grade into a different building with different people, different rules, different schedules. Yes, so I'm in that situation right now as she's going into first grade. Um, I think the one thing that has been a constant reminder and lesson for me, the A-type planner personality, is that there's only certain things I have control over. And there's a lot of things that I don't have control over. And that is a constant reminder with life and then add a pandemic on top of it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, that is the, the source of my anxiety is that planner uh, type A that really I want everything to fall in line. And I don't have the control for everything to fall in line. I am right there with you. And I think that is, I mean, I know that is a lot of anyone who has anxiety. It's that lack of control and the what ifs and the worries. So as we're chatting about this, what are some things that you would recommend to moms out there to number one, control their own mom's anxiety? as that we're dealing with the ever-changing school situation, ever-changing daycare situation, uh, ever-changing work from home, work essential, non-essential worker situation to kind of get rid of some of those what-ifs and worries and at the same time then help us prepare our kids because this is actually something you shared in the, the Facebook club group uh, about your son which thank you so much for sharing, but we don't, these poor kids right now, this is not normal for anyone. And we don't want them to grow up with this constant anxiety because of just this one little snippet of what their life is going to be like. So I was a huge loaded question, but go ahead. (laughs) Well, I'll start off and Tori, I hope you don't mind, but I'm not going to bury the lead here because I really want to get this message out there to everyone is my number one piece of advice for any parent, mom, dad, whatever it is, um, guardian, you have to do what's right for you and what's right for your child. I'm seeing a lot of parents. (laughs) I'm seeing a lot of parents out there on social media asking what is everyone else doing as far as sending their child to school, doing cyber, doing a hybrid, having a nanny, whatever it may be, they're asking other people, guess what? You are the parent of that child. You get to make your decisions. And I know we're asking just to feel better maybe about the decisions we're making or to flesh out some ideas that you haven't thought of. But please, when it comes down to it, know that you can make your own decisions. No one should judge you, shame you, make you feel embarrassed by the decision that you make. The one thing that I've taken from this pandemic is that we might be all experiencing this storm, but we're all in different boats. We have different medical situations, financial situations, work situations, 
different needs, different, you know, the academic, physical, emotional needs. There are too many variables for all of us to fit in one little box. So please don't feel judgment or shame or allow to feel judgment or shame because of your decision that you do with your child or your household. That's, that's my number one, you know, stand strong, be confident because it's your decision. Right. You can ask for ideas, but it is your decision in the end. You are the one in control. I love it. The end podcast (laughs) interview over. (laughs) That is the best advice. And I, I, I want to say that's the best advice that I always tell people as a new mom is do what works for you. You can hear all these other things, but in the end, it is what works for you. And I love how you're saying, because actually I was just listening to um, Brene Brown, Dare to Lead. And okay. all about, I was just, last night was the shame and guilt chapter. And okay. I was relating that to everything. So I love how you're saying, don't let people shame you because we kind of confuse things and say, oh, you're, we're guilt, you're on a guilt trip, but it actually is a little, it's different when it's shame because that's much deeper. So don't feel that shame from other people. This is your decision. You are in control of your family. Yeah. Cause we're, you're hearing all sides, you know, where, oh, the children should be back at school because they need this for their emotional development. They're going to be behind. They need to be social. I, I, I get that as a person who has studied, um, development, I get that, but you know what, these next three months, we're going to get through these next six months. We're going to get through. It may not look like what we knew, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be bad or worse. We do have the opportunity to make it actually very good. You know, there are, there are silver linings in this. And I know we could, Tori, you and I could sit down and list all of these silver linings that we have had during the time we have with our kids, right. with our family. Um, there are a lot out there if we, you know, really started listing them off. So we can't say that everything that comes out of this pandemic is going to be bad. Very, very true. So in looking at going to school during this time of uncertainty, essentially that's it. Um, What are the things that we can do to to make things better, more palatable, tolerated, and possibly even just awesome? I'm not going to uh, deny that this might be a really awesome situation. Um, I think, you know, one thing that's really important and anyone who struggles with anxiety will know that this is one of the major tenets of, of handling anxiety is establishing a routine. Routine is very helpful to help us feel in control, to help us understand and know what's coming next, um, to get the things done that we need to get done aside from the feelings that we're having. Our body will do autopilot, essentially, when we get into those routines. We as adults need routines, and our kids need routines. And the one nice thing with the the word and concept of routine, that can be established within any decision that you make. If you make the decision to send your kids back to school full-time, There is an established routine with school, but then you need to establish a routine at home that's going to make you and your child feel comfortable. If you're not sending your child to school full time or at all, establishing that routine at home so you know what to expect, they know what to expect, and that decreases that anxiety. So I really encourage you, whatever your decisions are, to look at what are those routines that we can put in place, both academically, a physical routine, an emotional routine, a communication routine. All those components will help just to to provide a good space for everyone to grow, develop, and be happy and healthy. 
I love that. And I really love the aspect of you saying the communication routine, because sometimes in our crazy, hectic lives, that can go to the wayside because that's maybe the last thing is a communication routine with your partner, a communication routine with your each child to see kind of how their day was. I think I, sh- I shared this the other day as I like to say, like, what was your favorite part of the day? And that's yeah. our routine. And in school, when we were having a hard time drawing things out of Ruben, that we would, you know, any frustration. So kind of going through this and, and not asking very targeted questions, just general. Um, are there any other ideas or recommendations you would have for parents who are talking to their kids who might seem a little nervous or anxious or not really knowing what to be feeling like at this point in time, some communication uh, ideas that you could give us? Of course, um, different ages with different types of communication will be different. So looking at your really little guys, a lot of times your communication is going to be through empathetic, compassionate touch. And then it may also be with play. Um, so, you know, obviously a child is going to feel more secure when they feel that touch, when they feel that connection with that parent or caregiver. Um, so, you know, definitely think about that and be conscious about the the touch, the hugs, the kisses that you might be giving, or the time that you're devoting to them one on one in play, um, that is really important. I think you give a great example with our little ones who are more verbal, is to ask some of those questions on a regular basis. Uh, create a time, maybe it's pillow talk, where before they go to bed, there's certain things that you talk about. Uh, my son and I created, um, what's my favorite? So we go through and we do some silly, you know, what's your favorite ice cream? What's your favorite Paw Patrol character? But then, you know, I get to infuse, what was your favorite part of the day? You know, what was your favorite activity at the playground? And out of that comes more conversation. Right. Um, One of the great techniques that I use, um, I use with the middle school students or even would encourage a, a parent of a high school student is to start a journal. And the, we all know every time I talk to a parent of a teenager, they're like, my child doesn't talk to me. They won't answer any of my questions or tell me anything. I get that. I do. Even a child who is very talkative to you at a younger age at mm-hmm. some point is going to start questioning, how much do I tell my parents? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that happens. So I instruct the parents to get a notebook. And to start off with a very non-threatening question, you know, it might be, what is your favorite ice cream? Or, you know, if we were to go anywhere for one day, where would you want to go? Start off with those questions. You give the question, you slip it into the bedroom. Some parents have done it under the pillow. They get to write their response and then there's a place for them to give it back to you. They also have the ability to ask you a question. So this is good sometimes when they have questions they want to ask an adult, but being face-to-face with an adult isn't a good feeling. It's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. So you start this going back and forth communication where it's it's written and it's just in a non-threatening way that really is nice. And a lot of parents uh, that have used this have really liked it. It has gotten to a point where it's more intimate, it's more real, it's not just the surface questions and conversation. Um, and it, it just has strengthened their relationship and they know that their child is communicating with them. So that, you know, may, may be something that you do with an older child who has some, some difficulty communicating with you. I would suggest putting that communication time into the routine. So if you are a family who sits down for dinner every night to start just, hey, we're going to download about our day. 
if because of your work schedule, nighttime doesn't work, maybe it's you ha- you're having breakfast or maybe you're taking a walk after they get home from school or before lunch if they're staying home. But put a special time in the day for that communication. They'll expect it. They'll know it. You'll know it. And you'll get the 100% attention that you should get during that time. I love that. Now, if there's pushback, how often do you have parents try this? Like if something's new of there, there might be pushback because they don't want to do it or they don't like the idea of it, but it takes a while to form a routine. So keep going back at it. I agree with consistency. I, I have been, I like to say this, I've been working with teenagers since I've been a teenager um, in, a, in a professional sense. Um, so I have consistently been around them and I've learned a lot from them and also through some of my mentors that I've had during my, pro- my journey. And consistency really is key. I'll give you an example. I worked, um, I, I've worked at two different churches as a youth director always with teenagers. And there was a young man who was a member of our church, but essentially gave off the vibe. I'm too cool for this. Um, I only come because of my, you know, my boy who's here too. And I'm just here to socialize with him. All right. That's cool. Um, I would invite him to youth group all the time and he would straight out tell me he has better things to do with his time than come hang with us. All right. Not a problem. But if your plans change, please feel free to come on by. And I was very consistent with him. And he started coming by. He started coming in. He started really liking what was going on. And he kept coming back. And he brought people in. And he continued, he continued to talk with me, to share with me. Because he was, he was testing me. Mm-hmm. You know, your teenagers will push you away. And when you're consistent with them, they realize that they can trust you. They realize that you're always going to be there, there for them, you know, no matter what. That your attention and care isn't contingent on something that they are doing or not doing. Right. That they find that unconditional trust and caring. Yeah. That is wonderful. And this is, we've branched out now. This is just parenting, the best parenting tips ever. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> wonderful. And you also were taking me back to days of working in the psych hospital in the child and adolescent unit. So <laughs> right Which, there and, with and you. Just, to, to relate it back, I mean, we know with our little guys, we need to be consistent. If I have a rule, I need to consistently follow that rule. We send mixed messages to them, mm-hmm. and it doesn't do them any good, and it doesn't do us any good. If we set up a consistent routine with them of communicating, they're going to know that. Um, I, I had a mom who tried very hard to be home after school for us throughout our years um, and tried to schedule work that way as much as she possibly could. And when she was home, the first thing is, how's school go today? What'd you do? You always knew mom was going to be asking those questions. And, you know, she'll tell you that we were great as, you know, little guys coming home from elementary, telling her more than she wanted to know about who (laughs) picked their nose and who got in trouble. (laughs) But, We also knew that as middle school students, that she was still going to be the same. As high school students, she was still going to be the same. In college, she was still going to ask us how things were going. She set up that expectation very early on. So that's, you know, that's important to lay the groundwork because maybe, you know, as they're four years old, they're not they're giving you a little information, you know, a lot of surface stuff, but Mm -hmm. by the time they get to 14 and 24, you're going to get the deeper and you're going to want to know the deeper. That's wonderful. Wonderful advice. Thank you. So you have covered a great amount for us today. If I can just do a quick recap, routine, consistency, 
And last but not least, the primary is that you are in charge of your own family and the decisions that you make. Don't feel guilted or pushed or pressured because everybody has different um, circumstances, medical, family, everything. So what works best for you? And I think that is the like not the golden rule, but the golden rule of parenting is what works for you. And I love how you're applying that here today. So thank you so much, Meredith, for um, joining me. Is there anything you would like to share that we haven't had a chance to chat about that you had on your head that you really wanted to talk about? The one last thing, and I think this is also important, is self-care. And I know I as a mom who was working full time during the school closures with two kids at home, a husband in a demanding job that was also working from home, you're trying to make everything work. I was trying to be the best homeschool parent. I needed to be a school counselor to everyone. I needed to make sure I was supporting my husband, keeping the house clean, um, not touching things. It, It was a lot and very overwhelming. And I didn't realize that I needed to take a step back and take care of myself. The old adage, you know, you can't pour from an empty cup. You know, we are mom and we are warriors. We are warriors. Yes. But at times we We need to take care of ourselves and recognize that. Um, So in that routine, make sure that you're taking some time for self-care. And you might also look at your little ones um, and and see and make sure that they're doing some self-care too. Um, They probably don't understand that concept, um, but when you help them implement self-care, you will see a difference with them. So that's something that's always a strategy to try if you're seeing some anxiety, if you're seeing some behaviors, to just check to make sure that they're taking care of themselves too. That's great. So on that, what is your favorite way to take care of yourself? I, like my perfect is on a Saturday or Sunday morning going into one of our rooms that just gets wonderful light with big windows, taking a cup of coffee and sitting quietly reading a book. It's just, for me, the picturesque of like, oh, this is great, snuggling up with a book, quiet. That's my self-care. What about you, Tori? That sounds wonderful. Oh, it really depends on the day, but I really like that nice alone time just to lay there and have silence. That is, I think, my go-to self-care recently. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so, so much, Meredith. I cannot thank you enough. I um, want to remind people, I will put links in the show notes to your podcast, to your um, consulting, life coaching. What else am I missing? Your social media. And you are a Momsiety Club member. So definitely Momsiety Club members. You can chat with Meredith in there. And she is wonderful. She shares her own Momsiety just as much as everybody else. And we know that we're not alone. So thank you for helping us all get rid of some of this Momsiety together, Meredith. Great. Well, thank you, Tori, for having me. And again, yes, if anyone has any questions or concerns, I definitely, you know, will will do my part to support others in the Momsiety Club. Are you searching for a community, a place to find both emotional and physical support for the stress, anxiety, and overwhelm that comes along with motherhood? This is also a place where you can share the fun and joy of those little ones as well. But that's what we do in the Momsiety Club membership and it's less than $10 a month. Head to the momxietyclub.com. That's M-O-M-X-I-E-T-Y-C-L-U-B.com. So at the end of each episode, I ask a question and ask you to call in or send in your responses. Today, the question is, what are some ways that you can think of helping a new mom or that you have been helped during the coronavirus from afar. 
leave a voicemail by calling 717-461-2283, or you can email a voicemail to hello at momxietyclub.com. You might just hear your story featured on a future episode. And while you're at it, let's take one thing off your never-ending future to-do list as a mom. To get the most out of the Momxiety Club podcast, hit subscribe so each new episode is sent directly to your phone. Would you like to help other new moms just like yourself? A very easy way to do that is to share the Momxiety Club podcast with a friend or go to your favorite podcast app and rate and review the podcast. These reviews help get the Momxiety Club podcast in front of more moms just like you. The Momxiety Club podcast is not intended to take the place of medical advice or therapy. If you are in crisis, call your local emergency number or the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-237-TALK.